This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. This program is brought to you by Parting Glass Racing. We've got a great weekend of stakes racing action just completed. Of course, Belmont having a terrific day on Saturday, highlighted by the 142nd running of the Belmont Stakes. Before we get to that, we'll start with some racing action from out of town. We'll begin by heading to Delaware Park for their stakes feature on Saturday, the $75,000 Gopher Wand for three-year-old fillies will join the Gopher Wand in progress. As they move down the back stretch, Cat of Kilkenny still by three parts. Squabble still well in hand. Now easing up on the leader to challenge now. Two lengths to Harvard Grace toward the outside of Hot Trip. And no such word continues the trail. But only about three and a half lengths separates the field now after a half in 50 and one. They've got a half mile to go. Tempo sure to quicken. It's Cat of Kilkenny by an echo versus Squabble. Harvard Grace now begins to advance, as does no such word on the outside. They bunch up as they make their way around the turn. Squabble. Here comes Habit of Grace on the far outside. No such word. Down on the inside, Cat of Kilkenny. We've got four across the track with a quarter to go. And from the outside, Habit of Grace sticks ahead in front. But no such word is going to square off with him. Top of the stretch. These two in tandem. The six and 14 and three. Habit of Grace on the inside. No such word on the outside. No such word sticks a nose in front. Habit of Grace is gamely paddling back on the inside. It's still no such word. And Habit of Grace down to the line. Neither one is given an inch. No such word. Habit of Grace. No such word. Wins it by a head. Have a great second, followed by Hot Trip in third. No such word picks up the victory from last to first, scoring by a neck over Harvard Gross with Hot Trip back in the third spot. Nice effort by No Such Word, who didn't get a ton of pace to close into, but still rallied strongly. She was second last out in the Black Eyed Susan, and third prior to that in the Fantasy to Blind Luck. So she's been running against some pretty nice fillies, and here gets perhaps a little bit of class relief as she returns to the uh, mid-Atlantic northern base of her trainer, Cindy Jones. No such word is a three-year-old daughter of Canadian frontier from Muskoka Ice by its freezing. Bred in Kentucky by Brereton Jones and owned by the breeder, trained by Cindy Jones and ridden to victory by Terry Thompson. No such word covers the mile in a 16th and 146.11. We'll head to Mammoth Park next for a trio of sprints. We'll start things off with three-year-olds and up fillies and mares sprinting in the Red Cross. Racing in the Red Cross. And it's Lady Alexander out quickly for the lead. Rated Feisty came out running in second. Miss United Nations is out third. Two lengths back to Christine Daye, who's just inside of Wind Caper. After that comes All Giving, and Strut the Canary is last as they move up the back stretch. And the leader is Lady Alexander. Lady Alexander, three quarters of a length in front. Here comes Christine Daye moving through a slim opening on the inside, up to engage the front runners. Wind Caper is right up there, too, with Rated Feisty and Miss United Nations on the outside. They're all a across the track and then it's all given and strut the canary 22 and to the quarter moving around the far turn and Christine Daae got in trouble there and had to steady she'll have to swing outside now Lady Alexander is the leader as they make their way to the top of the stretch rated fights to get second wind caper is third Christine Daae is going to come five wide we'll see if she can run them down there into the stretch Lady Alexander rated feisty and here she comes Here's Christine Daae, who's steadied on the turn, but has come right up to the leaders. And at the 16th pole, Christine Daae, Lady Alexander, and Rated Feisty come to the wire. Christine Daae, Lady Alexander, Christine Daae, or Lady Alexander, knows who's apart on the wire. Then Rated Feisty and Wind Caper.
Lady Alexander gets the victory at just under 5 to 1. On or near the pace every step of the way, involved early with Rated Feisty and holding on for a nose victory over the very nice Christine Day, who moved into this condition. Taking on Elders, she is a three year old who ran, I thought, a very good race after having a less than ideal trip, having been shuffled back a little bit and then forced wide. Rated Feisty settles for third. The winner, Lady Alexander, had won the Manatee at Tampa a couple of races back and then was up the track last time out in the Wayward Lass at Tampa in late February. Given a little freshening time, she returned sharp to score the victory. Lady Alexander is a chestnut filly, a four-year-old daughter of exchange rate from Lady Ironwood by Housebuster, bred in Florida by Millard Winter Road and owned by Rosemary Kesselring. Trained by Bruce Alexander and ridden to victory by Carlos Marquez Jr., Lady Alexander covers the six in 111.44. We'll head to the turf now and the running of the Wolf Hill Stakes on the turf sprinting five and a half furlongs. This race was originally carded at five and a half and ended up being run at the about distance of five and a half furlongs. The racing in the Wolf Hill. And it's true to tradition going out to the front. Right alongside is Blue Sailor, our friend Harvey, Affirmative on the far outside, and then Hero's Reward along the rail, followed by Silver Timber and Polanisburg. And last of all is Perfect Officer as they move down the back stretch. It is Blue Sailor in front, a half length over Affirmative, true to tradition, third to the inside. Our friend Harvey follows in fourth by another two. Silver Timber is in fifth, four and a half lengths off the lead. Then it's Polanisburg, Hero's Reward on the inside, and Perfect Officer as they round the far turn. Blue Sailor on top, Affirmative a length behind in second. True to tradition, third and down on the inside. They're followed by our friend Harvey on the far outside. Silver Timber is trying to close in. It is Blue Sailor. Silver Timber full of run now. Between those two, true to tradition, and then it's affirmative, but it's Silver Timber. Silver Timber and Joe Bravo will win the Wolf Hill. True to tradition was second, then Blue Sailor and Perfect Officer. Silver Timber is now 3 for 3 this year and 5 for 7 since arriving in Chad Brown's care off the claim last year. Silver Timber has really developed into one of the sharper turf sprinters coming in off of a pair of very good performances. Continues his streak as the odds on favorite over one of my old time favorites coming back off the September layoff. True to tradition, Blue Sailor completes the order of the top three. The winner, Silver Timber, is a gray or own gelded seven-year-old son of Prime Timber from Silver, I'm sorry, from River Princess by Al Wahush. Bred in New York by Says Who Thoroughbreds, owned by Michael Dubb and High Grade Racing Stable, trained by Chad Brown and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Silver Timber covers the about distance of five and a half and 101.03. Next up, the Sunday Stakes feature at Monmouth Park, three-year-old sprinting in the Rumson. They're off. And on the outside, Nathan's HQ came out on the lead with Cool Bullet away running in second. Ken's Cape now goes up on the outside, takes over second, and moves after the front runner. Break of three back to My Charming Clyde. My Man Marty is next. And number eight trails the field and races eight lengths off the lead as they head to the half mile pole. Nathan's HQ, Ken's Cape on the outside together through an opening quarter of 22 and 3 fifth seconds. Cool Bullet is in third, two lengths off of them. Three and a half back to My Man Marty, My Charming Clyde, and Enumerate on the far outside. is starting to make up ground all the way up into fourth now. Still six lengths behind the dueling leaders. Nathan's HQ on the inside, Ken's Cape alongside. Cool Bullet coming up to them three wide now. Enumerate has made good progress. He's fourth, now within three and a half lengths off the lead. After a half of 45 and four, they're into the stretch. On the far outside, Cool Bullet up to grab the lead. Ken's Cape. Nathan's HQ back to third on the inside. Enumerate's got to do better, and then it's my man, Marty. It is Cool Bullet in front. Inside Nathan's HQ as they come down to the wire. Cool Bullet and Garrett Gomez win the Rumson over Nathan's HQ. My man, Marty, came on late for third, and then Ken's cape and Enumerate.
Cool Bullet gets the victory off a second last time out in the Matt Wynn at Churchill Downs. Two back, he was victorious in the Hansel Stakes at Turfway Park. And here scores by two lengths over Nathan's HQ with Philadelphia shipper My Man Marty rounding out the top three. The winner in Cool Bullet is a chestnut gelded son of Red Bullet from Lizzie Cool by St. Bellato. Bred in Florida by Adina Springs and owned by Winmore Limited and Robert and Luana Lowe. Trained by Steve Margolis and ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Cool Bullet covers the six in 111.50. We'll head to Churchill Downs next for their Saturday stakes feature, the Early Times Mint Julep for Phillies and Mares on the Grass. They're in the gate. And they're off in the early times mint julep handicap. It was a picture perfect start. Towards the outside, Winter Circle is prominent. Towards the inside, My Baby Baby. Hot Cha Cha not too far away. Kirtana is racing quite wide, but now has come through to share third position. Just in advance of a coma. And last of all is absolutely Cindy. The winners of 28 races go out now with one circuit ahead of them. And it's Winter Circle who is out in front. My Baby Baby to the hedge racing in second. Hot Cha Cha is racing in third. Three wide is Kirtana in fourth. Fourth. A break now opening up of some four lengths back to a coma and still another two and a half lengths to absolutely Cindy. The quarter was in 25 and two and they make the run towards halfway in the 34th running of the early times mint julep and it is still Winter Circle has the lead. To the inside, my baby baby makes an early move through the half mile of 49 and one. Kiatana still three wide as they go to the far turn. Hot Cha Cha is there in fourth position. The reigning champion, a Coma has four lengths to find. She's racing in fifth, but she is clear of absolutely Cindy. Less than three-eighths from the wire. My baby baby, now about to be tackled by the looming presence of Kiatana. Kiatana's white blaze goes the lead, but my baby baby kicks back gamely to the inside. On the inside edge, Hot Cha-Cha comes on. Kiatana has the lead. My baby baby ain't going down without a fight. Hot Cha-Cha against the hedge. On the outside, a coma has has one last surge. Kiatana has to last a 16th. Hot Cha Cha to the inside hedge. A coma on the outside. It is Hot Cha Cha who wins the mint julep. To a coma in second. Kiatana in third and in fourth. My baby baby. Hot Cha Cha off of a strong win last time out. On the undercard of the Kentucky Derby, she keeps her record going with another victory here by three quarters of a length over Acoma, who is a horse that has been an absolute horse for course at Churchill Downs. She has to settle for a rallying second with Kirtana back in third as the favorite off of a very nice allowance performance. Hot Cha Cha is a dark bay or brown four-year-old daughter of Cactus Ridge from Reduced Sentence by Broad Brush. Bred in Kentucky by Nelson McMakin and owned by the breeder. Trained by Phil Sims and ridden to victory by James Graham. Hot Cha Cha covers the mile in the 16th on the Churchill Turf in 143.27. We'll head north of the border now in Canada on Saturday. They ran a pair of stakes races at Woodbine, both grade threes. We'll start with the Nassau Stakes for fillies and mares on the grass. They're at the post. They're off in the Nassau Stakes to a perfect beginning. Simply splendid from the outside, Points of Grace. Comes on in the center now, and it's closed out down toward the rail, and it's Points of Grace on a very comfortable lead out there. Her ears are right up in the air. Simply splendid is second. Close out to the inside in a third, then a rainbow view, Caribbean sunset. Miss Colors at the back of the pack in three and a half lengths off of Points of Grace. 24 and 1 for that opening quarter mile. And it's a points of grace being coddled on a lead of a length by Luis Contreras. Simply splendid in a stocking position in second and closeouts down to the inside third. Caribbean Sunset is fourth and two and a half lengths off the lead. Then we have Rainbow View who just ran by Caribbean Sunset. Miss Keller still trails five lengths off of points of grace. 47 seconds for that opening half mile. And they're inside the three-eighths pole now. Points of Grace, and the champion still leads at three-quarters of the length. Simply Splendid continues to hound Points of Grace at the top of the stretch. Rainbow View is on the far outside in that green cap. Miss Keller's come from last. 
final three sixteenths of a mile and Simply Splendid has taken the lead and it's Simply Splendid. Chantel Sutherland is all over trying to get her home. Miss Keller's trying to get to her on the outside and it's those two in a dogfight in the final sixteenth of a mile. Simply Splendid held on courageously to win the NASA over Miss Keller and Rainbow Blue. Simply Splendid gets the victory. Nice effort from just off the pace. She sat a stalking trip behind the pacemaker, Points of Grace, pounced to win by a half a length over Miss Keller, who was also in off of that uh, Churchill Downs race on the undercard of the Kentucky Derby. Rainbow View, the favorite at odds or at even money, could do no better than settling for third. The winner, Simply Splendid, who won an allowance race last time out, has now won, run her record to six for 12 lifetime. Simply Splendid is a chestnut mare, a daughter of Maria's Mon from Lears and Limos by Hennessy, bred in Kentucky by Dixiana Stable and owned by Jay Minari and Gail Castleman Cox, trained by Gail Cox and ridden to victory by Chantal Sutherland. It was a uh, good day for the ladies with Simply Splendid scoring the mile on the turf in 134.23. We'll head right back to Woodbine next, and we'll take a look at the, the co-featured Eclipse for Older Horses, also a Canadian Grade 3. We'll join the Eclipse in progress. And it's Fatal Bullet through a 49-3 and three opening half mile, less than a half mile remaining in the Eclipse Stakes. Fatal Bullet, three quarters of the length. Tieta Del Tigre shadows Fatal Bullet with three-eighths of a mile to go. Mass tracks down to the inside, third, Southdale travels well in fourth, comes on third now, Southdale is tugging at Wilson as they come to the quarter pole, stunning stags coming wide with a bid, and they're inside the quarter pole, Fatal Bullet, 13 and 2 for three quarters, and Fatal Bullet is called on for his best. Southdale is set down, as is Stunning Stag. Tieta Del Tigre hanging tough. Southdale in the center. On the outside, Stunning Stag. Fatal Bullets back in third now. Southdale and Stunning Stag to decide the Eclipse. And Southdale would not be denied. Southdale wins the Eclipse stakes to Stunning Stag. And Fatal Bullet was third. Saturday was indeed a very good day for the ladies as Emma Jane Wilson takes the other stakes race on Southdale by three quarters of a length over the late moving stunning stag with the pacemaker stretch out sprinter fatal bullet settling for third. Of course that horse, uh, he was the favorite just under five to two, a horse that's done his best running going a little bit shorter so he might have been questionable at the root of ground but uh, Southdale looks like an interesting horse perhaps one to keep your eye on. He's now three for five lifetime, a lightly raced four year old who was second in last year's running of the plate trial to eye of the leopard he was then off for nearly a year returned in may with a nice allowance victory and has now earned graded stakes credentials with his score in the eclipse southdale is a four-year-old son of street cry from pinafore's pride by saint bellato bred in ontario by rod ferguson and owned by the breeder trained by ian black and ridden to victory by emma jane wilson southdale covers the mile in a 16th and 143.77 We'll pause for a brief message when we return. A busy afternoon on Saturday at Hollywood Park. Please stay with us.
Welcome back to Horses and Courses. We'll continue now at Hollywood Park Saturday with a trio of stakes races, beginning with the Redondo Beach, a restricted stake for fillies and mares on the turf at a mile. They're off. Rosie Dimagieve broke beautifully and goes right for the front from turning top away in second. Value streams sharp at the rail in third. Annihilation breaks fourth, and the early trailer is exquisite. Rosie Dimagieve and turning top at the clubhouse turn. Value stream is a handful at the rail, and she's third, wants to go, two from the lead. Annihilation just outside of value stream, and the trailer is exquisite, and the leader is Rosie Dimagieve to the back stretch. Rosie Dimagieve trying to slow it down now. Now, and that's no good for value stream either as Rosie Dimagieve backed up right into her. Meanwhile, turning top is kept in the clear by Brice Blanc and she races in second. Value stream and Annihilation are now together third and fourth. They're less than two from the front. Exquisite is the trailer fifth and last. Three and a half lengths from first to last up the back stretch in the fifth. Redondo Beach Stakes and Rosie Dimagieve is the leader. Rosie Dimagieve, three quarters of a length from turning top who's gotten a perfect trip in second. Value stream still wants to go. She's at the rail third and Rosie Dimagieve just opened up a length and a half leaving the back stretch. Then comes Annihilation and the trailer is exquisite and the leader is Rosie Dimagieve but now Value Stream has finally gotten her way through and here's the new leader at the top of the stretch and she looks sharp. Value Stream off the top of the stretch leads three quarters of a length from Rosie Dimagieve in second. Two lengths two. Turning top and exquisite and it's value stream to the final 16th. Rosie Dimagieve is battling her heart out and trying to come back. Suddenly turning top comes and here comes turning top with her run. Rosie Dimagieve back in front but turning top surges and wins. Wow. Turning top got up. Rosie Dimagieve battled back to be second and value stream finished third. Turning top has now won three races in a row, a couple of allowance performances, and now she moves into restricted stakes company and scores by a head over the pacemaker Rosie de Miguel with value stream back in the third spot. The winner turning top is a dark bay or brown filly, a daughter of Pivotal from Pietra Dura by Cado Genro, bred in Ireland by Baruch Stud Ireland, owned by Michael Tabor, trained by Simon Callahan, and ridden to victory by Brice Blanc. Turning top covers the mile in 136. Point five three. We will head right back to, to uh, Hollywood Park now for older sprinters in the Grade 3 Los Angeles Handicap. They're at the post. They're off. M1 Rifle and Cost of Freedom. The two favorites break sharply. Cost of Freedom to the front. Jiggly splits horses and takes third. Then My Summer Slew and Easy's Gentlemen. Bet on Victor and Haya Silver at the back of the pack. Cost of Freedom up the back stretch. M1 Rifle has taken over second. Cost of Freedom leads by a half length. M1 Rifle is second. Jiggly is a length back in third. At the rail, My Summer Slew is fourth and less than two from the front. Easy's Gentlemen, three wide in fifth, three lengths off the lead. Bet on Victor had to tap on the brakes, leaving the back stretch. He is six lengths behind, joined by Haya Silver around the far turn in the 58th Los Angeles handicap. Cost of Freedom is the leader. He's a length and a quarter in front of M1 Rifle who's put to a drive in second. My Summer Slew's at the rail. To the outside, EZ's gentlemen. Bet on Victor is five from Cost of Freedom who settles into the lane and he's got a two length lead. EZ's gentlemen coming after him now and here's EZ's gentlemen trying to run down Cost of Freedom. Cost of Freedom a 16th out. He's a length and a half in front. EZ's gentlemen is second. My Summer Slew, Cost of Freedom, EZ's gentlemen. Gentlemen, cost of freedom. The 58th Los Angeles handicap goes to cost of freedom. He beat Easy's gentlemen three quarters of a length. My summer slew was third, and M1 Rifle finished fourth. Cost of Freedom, obviously back in sharp form. He returned off of his Breeders' Cup third and a close-up third. It was with an optional claiming event last time out, scoring nicely that day, and now returns to Stakes Company as the even money favorite scores on the front end three-quarters of a length over Easy's Gentleman with My Summer Slew, another length and three-quarters back as a big price, 35 to 1, to settle for third. The winner, Cost of Freedom, now 8 for 15 lifetime, is a dark bear brown gelded son of C's Tizzy from Freedom Dance by Moscow Ballet. 
Bred in California by the Harris Farm, owned by Gary and Cecil Barber, trained by John Sadler, and ridden to victory by Tyler Bays, Cost of Freedom covers the six furlongs in 108.49. From sprinters on the main track to rooters on the turf, next up the grade one, Charles Whittingham Memorial at a mile and a half on grass. They're off. Acclamation is absolutely sent to the front and he sprints away again. Acclamation in charge early. Kerry Gulch away second. Scintillo and Battle of Hastings away third and fourth. Hiades is fifth. Brushburn is next. Then Lou Breton, an unusual suspect, followed by Rendezvous. And the early trailer is Porfido. Acclamation, strong early. One lap to go in a three-length lead on Kerry Gulch, who's wrangled back by Kerwin John, and he'll sit second. So Acclamation will be uncontested into the clubhouse turn, and he's opened up a four-length advantage. Scintillo races in third. Battle of Hastings just outside of him fourth. Hiades has moved to the rail, fifth and about six from the front-running Acclamation. Then comes Brushburn. Unusual suspect and Lou Breton are 10 lengths off the lead. Rendezvous 12 and Porfido would have to make up 16 lengths in the final six furlongs to win. The 42nd Charles Whittingham Memorial Handicap in the West Coast version of Precious Passion. Acclamation is doing it again and he's running away. Acclamation is seven lengths in front. Hiades moves through inside of Kerry Gulch. Battle of Hastings is outside of Scintillo. They make up the second flight. Now Acclamation trying to take a breather at the half mile mile pole. His seventh length lead is now three and a quarter. Then comes Brushbrun. Lou Breton has still ten lengths to make up. Unusual suspect. Then comes Rendezvous. Porfido has trailed throughout. Acclamation has led throughout and now he's in a full sprint to the quarter pole. Acclamation and Christian Santiago Reyes. They are fresh, fit and strong at the top of the stretch. It's only a quarter of a mile for the grade one win and Acclamation is four lengths in front of I-80s. To the outside, Battle of Hastings is third. Scintillo is four and Acclamation comes to the final furlong. Reyes asks for him for everything he's got. High 80s is running. Battle of Hastings is inside and Acclamation is still clear. High 80s, Battle of Hastings, Lou Breton, Acclamation, yes! Acclamation did it again and ran them off their feet in the Whittingham. He won by two. High 80s second, close for third. Acclamation has now run uh, two very impressive performances on the front end in his last two grass races. And obviously, speed is more and more dangerous the longer you go. He won the Jim Murray after opening up a huge margin, held on by seven lengths, comes back. That day was 14 and a half to one, this time only three to one, but he pulls the same tactics. Didn't open nearly as big a margin, but held on to win by a length and a half. Hyades completes the exacta with Brushburn rallying into third. Acclamation is a Bay four-year-old son of unusual heat from winning in style by Sylvieville, bred in California by Old English Rancho and owned by E.W. and Judy Johnston, trained by Don Warren and ridden victory by Victor, or I'm sorry, by Christian Santiago Reyes. A very nice performance, another nice performance going long on the turf by a horse that was bred to go short on the main track. And uh, Acclamation seems to be uh, deciding to channel his inner precious passion and uh, become a dominant type going long on the turf with explosive of early moves to open up a lot of margin. He completes the mile and a quarter on the turf in a very respectable 159.45. Sunday stakes feature at Hollywood Park, the grade two Hollywood Oaks for three-year-old fillies. They're at the post. They're off. Camille C. and Antares World break well. Vision in gold is close up. Switch is at the rail, and the early trailer is blind luck. Camille C. has the lead at the clubhouse turn. Vision in gold running up outside of Switch to take over second. Camille C. a length and a quarter. Vision in gold is second with Switch. Tucked in at the rail third and about two from the front. Those three are three lengths clear of Antares World, and the trailer is blind luck as they turn into the backstretch in the 65th running of the Hollywood Oaks, and the first quarter was a creepy crawly, 25 and one-fifth seconds. Blind luck is going to have to close into very soft fractions here in the Oaks. The California bred, Camille C. is the leader just by a neck from Vision and Gold in second. Switch is angled to a clear run. She could attack three wide. 
wide. She's two and a half lengths off the lead, and Taurus World has five lengths to make up, and Blind Luck is the trailer 50 seconds flat. Past the half-mile pole, Camille C. is the leader. She is a half-length in front of Vision and Gold in second. Switch has yet to be asked to go by Martin Garcia. She is third, but now coming after Vision and Gold. Meanwhile, Camille C. is getting away at the top of the stretch. She's built up a two-and-a-half or three-length lead. Look at Camille C. and Joe Talamo at the top of the lane. And Taurus World is next. Blind Luck is a quarter of a mile from the wire and six lengths behind Camille C., who is the leader. Camille C. comes to the final furlong. She's got a chance to pull off a shocker. Here comes Switch after her in second. Blind Luck is still four lengths behind, and Switch is alongside Camille C., and Switch has just taken over the lead. Camille C. is second. Blind Luck is too late, and Switch has won the Highwood Oaks. Switch beat line, Blind Luck by over a length. Camille C. was third, close for fourth. Switch pulls off a bit of an upset, if you call a $7.40 winner an upset. It was in the sense that she was able to defeat Blind Luck, who rallied into second but could not qu catch Switch, who had opened up a six, a, my, about a length or so uh, advantage and was able to hold sway by a length and a quarter. She did uh, take command nicely at the top of the stretch, and unfortunately, Blind Luck as a deep closer is often the victim of pace. The pace was slow. They went 25.30, 50.11, and 114.50. Those kinds of fractions make it very difficult, particularly in a short field, for a closer to rally. And so uh, Blind Luck, the winner of this year's Kentucky Oaks and a multiple grade one winner, has to settle for second. Camille C., the early pace setter, if you want to call that a pace, and I'm sure that the connections of Blind Luck don't, completes the top three. The winner switch, very nice efforts in recent performances. She was a good second to Tanda in the seven furlong railbird, third earlier in the year in the, both the Las Virginis and the Santa Inez. So she'd been running all along against some of the best of her generation, including Blind Luck. Switch is a bay daughter of Quiet American from Antoinette by Nicholas, bred in Kentucky by Calumet Farm and owned by the CRK Stable, trained by John Sadler and ridden to victory by Martin Garcia. Switch covers the mile in the 16th and 144.54. We will head next to Belmont Park and we'll take a look at the Friday co-featured events starting early on the card. We had three-year-olds on the turf in the Hill Prince. And they're off. Krypton Nordic Truce. Nordic Truce is actually in front in the early stages here. With Krypton coming up on the inside second, Lethal Combination has reined in to run back in third, followed by Gold Medallion fourth, three lengths back to the trailer Noah's Dream. So now on the backstretch run, and Nordic Truce, who normally comes from off the pace, some of the time well off the pace, has found himself on the lead today. Nordic Truce, and they allow him an easy lead. He's really getting away with something very easy here indeed. 24 and 4 was the opening quarter mile. They've barely broken a gallop. Krypton runs along in second, lethal combination third on the outside. Gold Medallion reserved off this very slow pace in fourth position, three lengths back to Noah's Dream, now running in fifth. Down the back stretch, Ramon Dominguez rationing out that speed, if you can call it speed, of Nordic Truce. The quarter was 24 and four fifths seconds and a pokey half in 49 and three. Krypton is second, still second throughout, followed by Gold Medallion running along in third. Lethal Combination is fourth on the outside, and four lengths back to Noah's Dream, the trailer. Now the race is on, and here is Krypton. Krypton, who just grabbed a short lead there from Nordic Truce, and they are streaking into the stretch. Krypton now in front. Krypton is the leader. Nordic Truce is a half length behind with a furlong to go. Krypton in front, Nordic Truce in tight, and he's still fighting on, but a neck behind as they come to the final. 16th, Krypton in front, and Nordic Truce, followed by Lethal Combination. It is Krypton! You got it! Krypton got it! Sprinting Nordic Truce through the stretch and getting ahead on the line first. Lethal Combination was third. Krypton, poor pulls off the upset victory here. And again, it was two to one, so it wasn't like a huge victory, but the horse that he beat was the odds-on favorite, Nordic Truce, 
who I thought ran a fairly enterprising race. I'm not quite sure why he ended up on the front end, although, again, as mentioned, a lot of times in a short field, it's hard to find much pace. Ramon Dominguez took this uh, usual closer off right onto the pace, and he settled for second. There was a, uh, an interference call, uh, both the stewards' inquiry and a uh, claim of foul by Ramon Dominguez. There was some tight quarters during the stretch run, but the results did stand, and Krypton ends up pulling off the upset, beating Nordic Truce with lethal, lethal combination back in third. Krypton, who was beaten 10 in the uh, Lexington on the poly track at Keeneland in his most recent start, a little bit of an in and outer. He had shown some very good races and a couple of really disappointing ones, but here sits the stalking trip and is able to run down Krypton at the top of the uh, lane and hold sway by a neck. Krypton is a dark bay or brown son of Rock Hard 10 from Freedom Reigns by Unbridled Song. Bred in Florida by Jack Better Farm, owned by Harvey Clark and Ron Winchell. Trained by Karen McLaughlin and ridden to victory by Rajiv Mara. Krypton covers the mile on the Belmont Turf in 134.97. Next up, we're going long on the main track, once around the Big Oval in the Grade 2 Brooklyn. And they're off. L. Duffer breaks on top right alongside its American Dance. Over toward the inside, it's Gabriel's Hill as they make that run for the first turn. Well out into the track, it's American Dance. And over toward the inside, Gabriel's Hill. Not far beyond them now, it's Gangbuster comes up in third. L. Doffer's now fourth on the outside. And then Stones River's moved over to the inside to save ground. Round that first turn, he's now running in fifth. And then it's Tiger's Rock who's sixth, followed by Al Como in seventh. And Tranquil Manor is the early trailer. So it's Gabriel's Hill who takes the field through the opening stages here. The first quarter was up in 24 and 2 fifth seconds. American Dance settles down in second. Gangbuster now third toward the inside. El Doffer out of harm's way is on the far outside. He's three wide fourth heading into the back stretch run. The opening half mile here was very reasonable. 49 and 2 fifth seconds. So it's Gabriel's Hill on an uncontested lead down that back stretch run, still leading clearly by a length and a half American Dance. Gangbuster down toward the inside. El Daffer is moving sweetly, still unhurried as El Daffer on the far outside. In between horses, Tiger's Rock, then Al Como, who's only about four lengths from the lead now, down to his inside, Stones River. Tranquil Manor has trailed throughout. Down the back stretch, three quarters in 115 flat. Gabriel's Hill has led throughout. American Dance now. Johnny Velasquez trying to make a move with him with four and a half furlongs to go. Then Tigers Rock in between horses. El Doffer on the outside. Gangbusters under a ride too. Down on the rail and fifth. Al Como well within striking range with a half mile to go here. Gabriel's Hill ran a mile in 139 and one fifth seconds. El Doffer making a move now, and here comes El Doffer coming on to confront Gabriel's Hill with less than three furlongs to go. Al Como rallies. Al Como is coming on the outside, and Stones River, and Tranquil Manor, who was last on the backstretch on the far outside, and now the field turns for home in the Brooklyn handicap. Gabriel's Hill is digging down. Here's Al Como, El Doffer sandwiched in between those two. Stones River joins the fray on the far outside fourth. A valiant Gabriel's Hill clinging desperately. Al Como surging. Now Al Como's got a short lead. Gabriel's Hill fighting hard for every bit of this mile and a half photo finish. What a thriller this Brooklyn was. Gabriel's Hill in a valiant effort. He may have got it narrowly over Al Como. Father back, El Doffer and Stones River. Al Como turns the tables on a couple of horses that he ran a behind in this race last year. He was up the track on a sloppy track in the Brooklyn last year and here first time back off of three disappointing runs in Dubai returns to the U.S. to score by a nose over the late the early move of Gabriel's Hill with El, da with da El Daffer back in the third spot. This was a kind of an interesting race. We had horses coming in from a number of different types of performances but uh, Alcomo shipping back from Dubai scores the win and it, it always is kind of interesting to me when they run a mile and a half all the way around the racetrack and you end up with only a nose separating the top two and obviously Gabriel's Hill in from Calder proving the fact that once again speed 
going long, always very dangerous. The winner, however, Alcomo, is a bay horse, a son of Rainbow Corner from amazing singer by Tokati. He was bred in Brazil by the Aris Campestre and is owned by Abdul Rahman Al Jasmi, trained or ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez and trained by Eduardo Caramori. Alcomo covers the mile and a half at Belmont in 230.07. We will pause now for one more brief message. When we return, we've got Belmont Stakes Day card, a great day of racing, terrific stakes racing, and some very exciting finishes. Please stay with us. back to horses and courses of course now it is time for the belmont stakes card and uh, we've got a terrific group of races beginning with three-year-olds going seven furlongs in the grade two woody stevens and they're off to funny bone got off to a good beginning so too discreetly mine and 85 and a 50s at the rail up the back stretch it's discreetly mine and 85 and a 50 and those two hook up in a speed duel in the first furlong five links behind them is the funny bone third and then remand and another big break six links back to thank you philippe the speed duel continues down the back stretch here. Discreetly mine at 85 and a 50. And they whistle through a quarter in 22 and 1. And they're eight links ahead of the funny bone third. And the speed duel continues at the half mile pole. There's nothing between discreetly mine and 85 and the 50. Their strides are synchronized. Head to head, six links ahead of the funny bone who's starting to whittle away at that lead now. They're approaching the top of the stretch. They've run a scorching half mile in 44 and 4. It's now discreetly mine. But here comes the funny bone who looms in behind him, switches to the outside, and targets discreetly mine as they turn for home. 85 and a 50 is spent and remand is fourth. And here's the funny bone to take the lead. It's the funny bone in front. Discreetly mine softened up by that hard half mile, and remand comes on late. But it's going to be the funny bone who strides home a decisive winner beneath the patient Edgar Prado. The Screatly Mine held for second there, and Remand was third. The final time was 122 and three. To Funny Bone off a very strangely run performance last time out in the withers, going a little longer than he really wants to go. Here gets the perfect trip. He got the setup that he needed as discreetly mine an 85 and a 50, went right after it early. 85 and a 50 dropped out of it. Discreetly mine went on very, very nicely to finish a good second, but to Funny Bone had him measured three and a quarter lengths as they crossed the line over discreetly mine with remand also taking advantage after a slow start of that early uh, contest and rallying to third. The winner to Funny Bone is a three-year-old chestnut son of DeWild Cat from Elbow by Woodman. Bred in Florida by Harold J. Plumley and owned by Paul Pompa Jr. Trained by Richard Dutro Jr. and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. To Funny Bone covers the 7 and 122.64. Next up, grade one fillies and mares on the turf at a mile in the just a game. They're in the gate. 
And they're off. And immediately after that early lead, it's Speakeasy Gal and her stablemate Cherokee Queen has come out running in second. Proviso away third. My Princess Jack is back reigning in fourth. And alongside her, it's Fantasia. And five lengths back to Fola, who's just lumbering along lackadaisically in the early stages here. The pace setter is Speakeasy Gal, and she leads Proviso by a length and a half. And her stablemate, Cherokee Queen, is third toward the inside after a tepid first quarter of 24 and two fifths seconds. Then it's Fantasia who's together with my Princess Jess. Another five back to the still unhurried Fola. So down the back stretch run, there's four and a half furlongs remaining here. Speak easy, gal. Javier Castellano keeping after her to keep that lead. And Proviso sidles up alongside after a half and 48 and one fifth seconds. Cherokee Queen is third, Fantasia fourth. My Princess Jess in behind those two. She's still well within striking range with three furlongs to go. Another three and a half lengths back. And Full is just starting to hit her best stride. But Full is starting to accelerate as they come to the top of the stretch. Speakeasy Gal is still in front. Still in front as they turn for home. Proviso still right next to her, running second. Cherokee Queen toward the inside is now third. Headlong into the final furlong, and here's Proviso, who strikes the lead right there at the eighth pole. And Fola's coming with a determined rally on the outside. And my princess just too, down to the finish. Here is the wire, and fit it is. Proviso holding on. Fola runs out of gun. And my princess Jess. Proviso, a very nice effort from off the pace, considering that she did not have a ton of pace into which to close. The fractions were fairly leisurely for a firm turf course, and Mike Smith guided her to a perfect position where she scored from just off the pace. This is a horse that has normally been a deep closer, but a nice ride by Mike to get her fairly close to that early moderate pace set by Speakeasy Gal. She was able to rally strongly to pick up the victory by a half a length over Fola. It was about a neck back to My Princess Jess in the third spot. The winner Proviso is a bay mare, a daughter of Densilly from Beach by Woodman, bred in Great Britain by Judmont Farm and owned by the breeder. Trained by Bill Mott off of victory over males by a desperate nose in the last jump last time out in the Kilroe Mile. She's now picked up another grade one victory, running her record to seven for 20 lifetime. Ridden to victory by Mike Smith, Proviso covers the mile in 134.09. Next up, older sprinters in the true north. Ready for the start. And they're off. And there goes Checklist on the outside, and Formidable's got early speed, too. And Snapshot, Checklist, and Formidable, and they'll knock heads in the opening furlong here. And then it's Snapshot, two and a half lengths behind them in third. Elusive Warning is now fourth. More than a reason is fifth. Fantasy Free Race is sixth. Got to go win. Struggling early on at the back of the pack. Bree Bon has been out sprinted. He's already 11 lengths from the lead. And the leader is Checklist, who knocks off a 22 and one opening quarter mile. Formidable, hard on his heels, running second. Snapshot takes to the outside for a clear shot at the lead with less than three furlongs to go. Two and a half lengths away. Elusive warning well within striking range is he. He's now fourth on the outside. Fantasy free is there. Here's Bribone who's come alive. And Bribone is starting to circle horses on the outside. He's doing it willingly. The half was 45 and three. They're at the top of the stretch. Checklist, formidable. Snapshot on the outside, fantasy free. And here comes Bribone. And and Bree Bone blows by them all. Bree Bone is back in stride. He wins the True North. He did it from way out of it, and he did it emphatically. Snapshot was second under the wire. Checklist was third. Ribon proves that he's not just a miler after trying the mile last time out, which has obviously been his favorite distance for a number of years. Uh, last time out, a little bit on the dull side. Now, that was his first try back after having been shipped down to the Caribbean to run in Barbados. Uh, so maybe he just wasn't quite back to his very best form. 
but obviously as a nice closing horse it looks like turning him into a sharp closing sprinter certainly won't hurt he's obviously got uh, six and seven furlongs now covered with a huge rallying move by a length and a half over snapshot who i thought ran a very strong race coming out of a try at pimlico on the undercard of the preakness checklist up from Gulfstream Park, where he had run very impressively in Allowance Company last time out, completes the order of the top three as the 5-2 to two favorite. The winner, Brie Bon, is a chestnut gelded son of Mark of Esteem from Rowat Arazi by Arazi, bred in France by Darpat SL and owned by Derek Smith, trained by Todd Pletcher and ridden to victory by Garrett Gomez. Since arriving in Pletcher's barn, he has done quite nicely and uh, quite interesting that uh, Todd has decided to drop him back into the sprint game. But obviously this worked out nicely as he and Garrett Gomez complete the six furlongs in 109.63. Next up, it's three-year-old fillies in the grade one acorn at a mile. They're in the gate for the acorn. And they're off. On the far outside at Champagne Doro. Much rejoicing is there. Quiet temper too. Buckle up, Buttercup is in between horses, running in fourth. Chris fifth on the outside. Dances with Ashley is sixth toward the rail. Streaker is seventh, and she's only three lengths from the lead. Amen, hallelujah, runs in eighth position. Indian Burn is down ninth. And seeking the title is tenth toward the inside. Tanda is now running 11th in title pool trails. A tight pack of three-year-old fillies down the backstretch run. Champagne Doro dashes clear. A quarter and 23 and three fifth seconds in a firing line right in behind that long shot. Buckle up, Buttercup now advancing as they move into the far turn. Then it's much rejoicing in between horses. Dancer with Ashley toward the rail. Crisp is fifth, only three lengths from the front. Streaker has asked for a bit more. The half was up in 46 and four fifth seconds. Amen, hallelujah is moving very well. But amen, hallelujah may be forced to take the overland route into the stretch. Then it is still Quiet Temper who's in contention while only seven lengths from the lead. Tanda circling horses, but Tanda's forced to go seven wide as they make the turn into the stretch. Champagne Doro and Buckle Up Buttercup are head to head for the lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Comes up to join the leaders on the outside. Tanda made a big wide move on the far turn. Fourth, now third. It's in a final furlong. Champagne Doro still clinging desperately to the lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Right at her throat latch. Tanda continues to close. Here's the wire. Champagne Doro did it. And Champagne Doro is 40 to 1 on the wire. Amen. Hallelujah. And Tenda. Champagne Doro pulls off perhaps the upset of the weekend at almost 40 to 1 on the front end from post position 11 over the favored Amen. Hallelujah with Tanda rallying very strongly off of a slow start to finish in third. I think it's fair to say that the three-year-old Phillies this year are not unlike the three-year-old Colts, a very evenly matched group, a lot of them taking their chances and taking, uh, taking turns picking up victories in major races. This race just demonstrates it. They were also quite close at the finish. Uh, Champagne Dioro, who has managed to be extremely effective when she gets to the front last time out, never got involved in the pace in the Kentucky Oaks. She had had two very sharp prior races on the dirt prior to that, both of them at the fairgrounds. So kind of an interesting filly and certainly dangerous on the pace. Champagne Dioro is a three-year-old daughter of Medallia Dioro from Champagne Glow by Saratoga Six. Bred in Kentucky by Liberation Farm and owned by Southern Equine Stable Limited, trained by Eric Gio and ridden to victory by Martin Garcia, Champagne Dioro covers the mile at Belmont in 137.44. Next up, older horses on the turf in the Woodford Reserve, Manhattan. And they're off. Pinkney Hill take the points. Jet Propulsion racing for the lead from the outside. And Jet Propulsion very keen to go on. And he clears the field racing for the first turn. Take the points second on the inside. Interpretation far outside third. Just as well is racing fourth now. And then it's Pinkney Hill who settles down fifth as they move into the clubhouse turn. Strike a deal is sixth. Expansion is seventh. And Gio Ponti the favorite is eighth on the inside. He's rating about ten lengths from the lead. 
Farther back in the field, Winchester is ninth. Court Vision is running in tenth and three lengths back to Grand Couturier, who is the last of them all as they begin the run into the backstretch. Jet Propulsion on top, the leader by a length and a half. Interpretation sitting chilly second. Take the points is rating nicely, third toward the inside. Alongside that one, it's just as well. There goes Strike a Deal, and he's tugging away now, and he's racing up toward the leaders after a half mile in 48 and 4 fifth seconds. Pinkney Hill is now running in sixth position, followed by Expansion seventh, and Champion Gio Ponte is eighth with five furlongs remaining here. Then Winchester, Court Fishing, and Grand Courtier still at the back of the pack, and still up front, it is Long Shot Jet Propulsion. Still on that lead, he's out there now by two. Strike a deal on the outside, take a points at the inside. Interpretation in between those two. Rounding the far turn now, Gio Ponte is trying to come off the rail for some running room, but there's a berry of horses in front of him, and they're coming to the top of the stretch. And here comes take the points after jet propulsion as they turn for home. Pinkney Hill is right there now toward the inside. Cut! Court Vision has cut the corner beautifully. Grand Couturier is coming on the inside. Expansion is there. Giopano threading his way through. And just as well, they're coming down to the finish. Take the points being swarmed upon here. Here's Expansion. Giopano down toward the rail. Winchester on the outside. Wild finish. Winchester and champion Giopano. Winchester got him. Winchester got him on the wire. Giopano was second. Expansion was third. And take the points was fourth after a rough and tumble stretch run in the Manhattan. And it was another upset forcing us into the uh, position of having a carryover into uh, Belmont's Wednesday card as Winchester picks up the upset win 21 to 1 over the favorite Joe Ponte who is just about the even money favorite expansion another long shot running a very big race and this is a horse that has developed quite nicely in recent months, although uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, that most thought that he was perhaps a little over his head in terms of class here against the likes of Gio Ponte just as well, Court Vision, and others who were all proven commodities at uh, the grade one and grade two level. So obviously good to see him stepping up. The winner, Winchester, a little bit difficult to come up with. He did win an allowance, now winners of two at Keeneland last time out on March, or I'm sorry, on April 21st. But uh, since winning the Secretariat at three two years ago, he has really been a bit of a disappointment. He's run a couple of good races without really ever breaking through, but it looks to me like uh, with this second grade one win, he has confirmed his three-year-old form. Winchester is five-year-old son of theatrical from Rum Charger by Spectrum, bred in Virginia by Mr. and Mrs. Bertram F. R. Firestone and owned by the breeders, trained by Christophe Clement and ridden to victory by Cornelio Velasquez. Winchester covers the mile and a quarter on the turf in 159.46. Next up, the grade one mile and a half Belmont Stakes. And they're off. Interactive on the far outside. Spangled Star is there. First dude has some speed. So does Game On Dude. So they make their way to that sweeping clubhouse turn here at Belmont Park. And it's First Dude who's first into the turn. Uptown Charlie Brown is up close to the pace today. And Interactive is two. He's right there running in third. Game On Dude is fourth on the outside and fly down. Now runs in fifth position. Drosselmeyer is sixth on the outside. Then Spangled Star is back running in seventh. A break of three back to stately victor eighth and icebox is now ninth and he's already about 11 lengths from the lead and at the back of the pack now are stay put dave and dixie and make music for me they are 10th 11 and 12th as first dude takes the field into the backstretch run first dude leads it by length being pushed along here by interactive the opening half mile was reasonable 49 seconds flat so first dude settles into that powerful stride of his he's out there stretching those long legs he's now in front by a length and three quarters interactive is second game on do it on the outside is running along in third uptown charlie brown is rating beautifully so far he's fourth toward the inside drosselmeyer is fifth fly down is six five and a half lengths from the lead then it's a break of two and a half to spangled star followed by icebox icebox has gotten a bit closer he's now about eight lengths from the lead after a three-quarter mark of 114 and four Farther back in the field, our stay put stately victor who's still unhurried with five furlongs to go. Make music for me. Dave and Dixie has dropped out to trail the field. 
furlong after power for furlong. It's first dude. First dude leads. Interactif is second. Game on dude is third with a half mile to go here. Uptown Charlie Brown, he's now being asked to pick it up. Drosselmeyer is fifth. He's only three from lead. Then fly down. Time ticking away for Icebox. He's still got a lot to do and only three furlongs to do it. He's now been passed by Stay Put. And now the field comes to the top of the stretch. First dude, game on dude, and Interactif. They're across the track together. Uptown Charlie Brown is down toward the rail. Drosselmeyer comes up on the far outside at the top of the stretch. First dude, game on dude. They're head to head for the lead. Drosselmeyer trying to wear them down from the far outside. Uptown Charlie Brown and fly down, down to the finish. First down is deputy on the outside here. Here at the wire, Drosselmeyer, who gets first dude in the shadow of the wire. Drosselmeyer, Drosselmeyer, an upset winner. Fly down and first dude. A lot of people figure that without the Derby and Preakness winner or Preakness winner in the field that it was going to be a bit of a dull race. And as it turned out, it was anything but. It was quite an exciting finish as Drosselmeyer makes the five wide run to finish three quarters of a length in front of Flydown. We did have a little steadying going on on the first turn, not anything particularly significant. And first dude who got to the front rather easily loped along nicely on the front end with Ramon Dominguez just divvying out his pace uh, as needed. Unfortunately, it was going to fall short by about a length or so of the win, but uh, a very nice effort by all three on top. And it turned out to be a pretty exciting stretch run as Russell Meyer, Fly Down, and First Dude have all run against some pretty nice horses. And I think it's fair to say the three-year-old crop this year, if nothing else, they're an evenly munched evenly matched bunch and they will probably provide some pretty good betting opportunities throughout the course of the coming season. 13 to 1, a very nice price on Drosselmeyer getting a ride or change to Mike Smith who of course had won earlier in the day in the grade one just a game for trainer Bill Mott. This was a, uh, a obviously a big change for this horse who had run a couple of kind of dull efforts. He, he was a good second to fly down last time out but prior to that kind of a I thought kind of an unambitious third in the Louisiana Derby. Maybe it was the rider change. Maybe he's just developed with a little bit of age and maturity. But Drosselmeyer has now put himself into the mix as one of the leading three-year-olds in, uh, in the crop with his win in the 142nd running of the Belmont. Kind of an interesting race and a strange turn following the race as Uptown Charlie Brown, who a lot of people liked a bit, went off at 10-1 to 1 and did cross the line fifth. He was disqualified, interestingly enough, as the weight pad that he was carrying, an eight-pound pad that they put on the, you know, like a, it looks like a saddle pad, and it, uh, it carries some of the weight, uh, actually fell off. It actually came out from underneath the saddle. It was dislodged. Fortunately, Rajiv Mara was not in any danger, as that would obviously leave the girth slightly looser, I would think. But uh, Uptown Charlie Brown was disqualified in place last because he did not carry the full 126 pounds all the way across the wire. So uh, just another little bit of strange doing in this year's three-year-old classics. The winner, Drosselmeyer, is a three-year-old chestnut son of distorted humor from Golden Ballet by Moscow Ballet, bred in Kentucky by Aaron and Marie Jones, owned by Windstar Farm, which of course has now won the Kentucky Derby, and the Belmont Stakes with different horses and different trainers. This one trained, of course, by Bill Mott and ridden to victory by Mike Smith. Drosselmeyer covers the mile and a half in 231.57. That'll wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed the program, and we'll be able to join us again next week as we take a look at stakes racing action from around the country. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.